en Aurea. Yo people, what's going on? Welcome back to Saeed TV and we are live for the best of the rest show. We got man like Patrick in the building. He's got his full kit today. You get me? That means Tottenham have won. You know what I'm saying to you? Uh, Patrick, what are you telling me, man? What's, what, 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 what year is that, that kit? Is that a 91 is, kit, innit? Nah, 84, something like that. Throwback years. Got the whole Have you got your shorts and socks on as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine that full kit. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. Man. I'm good. What's everyone saying? Feels like it's been a minute, but yeah, it's good to be back on with the boys. Looking forward Absolutely, to all the comments. Man. Everyone in the chat. What's good? Let's go. Let's do we're this. We're here. We're here, man. We're here. We got we got Lewis is smiling today. You get that he's brimming. He's, you get me? He's got the shine in your shine. Point he has come, people. About <laughs> fucking time as well. Let's go. We <laughs> are staying up. Say, we are staying up. Come on, jeez. What's everybody saying? Good to be back, though. Good to be back. Come on, man. It's good to see you, man. It's good to see you. I know you last week you was at Chelsea, Arsenal Stadium. I seen all the way, by the way, all the Arsenal fans, they were on to you, man. They were like, yo, how did you let us score on that? And then, man, you were on it, man. You were sticking it on the fair play, man. Bro, he, he, he wasn't he wasn't around the right Arsenal fans, I'll tell you that much for free. <laughs> well, honestly, man, that I told you lot, that was the one game I cared about. Sadly, we didn't get the nil-nil draw that I was wishing for, but we got a goal. And now we have four. We have multiple goal of the month contenders. First time in ages. We're moving up in the world. Uh, come on, listen, we love to see him, and we love to see him. We'll talk about that as well. We got Premzy, big, big win for you, man. Uh, you must be buzzing this weekend. A glimmer of hope, man. You see Everton shelling it out yesterday, man. I'm telling you, man, be excited, man. The time nah, is coming nah, I don't know about being excited, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. Tell you, but it, it keeps us in there, keeps us within touching distance. Obviously, we've got to see what Man City do. Uh, it's good that Everton are find a little bit of form, you know what I mean? Because you never know, going to Goodison, they could potentially drop some points. I can't see it happening, but... If it happens, happy days, then we just got to hope and pray. You get me? Hopefully, God's listening to a few of the Mandem's prayers and that. 
and then they can drop a few more points. But we've got our three games left. We win our three games and we just see what, what happens from there. But still a very, very tough ask, man, regardless of what. Too little, too late, in my opinion. But it is what it is. But big up the chat. It's good to have everybody on the panel at once. Again, it's been a little while since this has happened. So it is good to, yeah. good to see everyone, man. Big up the chat good as well. Everyone. Yeah, big up the chat as well, man. Uh, months, you get me. Prems is finally here as well. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, any any previous agendas that you had, bring it in. But, yeah, man, how are you, months? Everything blessed? Um, yeah, man. What can I can't complain? Six wins on the bounce now. Uh, can't remember the last time that's happened. Um, got yeah. me feeling like the old days. You know what I'm saying? You know what they say about the old days? The old days. <laughs> we need some more You know the vibes. But, um, what well, I can't really complain, really. You know what I'm saying? It's probably be the first show where, where I actually commend Premzi's team. I would have commended the team last for the for, for the win last week as well. I don't know, but I'm going to be commending your team. I'm rooting for you to get top four, fam. I'm rooting. I'm rooting. Yeah, for I, I'm going to say from now, this is this is the duo. This is the duo people didn't think they needed was Monster <laughs> Premier League. When I when I was Arsenal need to win. Like, they need to win this game. I need Newcastle in the mud. You know, it's, listen, we got Super Cartel. Nameless. Rock their boat. Rock their boat in it. And, and Saeed, I'll get to you later. Don't you worry. I'll get it's to not, you. Yeah, it's yeah, not for yeah, everyone. Yeah. It's not for everyone, shall we say. It's not, it's not for everyone, man. But now, nah, listen, big up H, man. This guy's the biggest troll. Liverpool fan here. Big up, man. He says, people, who's had a better squad, Liverpool or United? Because this season, United fans are saying Liverpool are finished and United are back. Please answer. Don't worry, we're going to get back to that because, like I said, we want to leave that segment for the right segment. I want to start with Declan Rice first. Um... And you know what? It was a it's a talk topic today. Um, West Ham has slapped a, a mad price on him. Um, West Ham will, will allow Decarice to leave this summer if they receive an offer worth 120 million from a champion oh. club. 120 million guys. How did um, what? Bro, I, I don't mean, know. Man. He, I genuinely he bossed don't Casemiro. Know. He bossed Casemiro. The five-time Champions League winner, the guy that can do no wrong. Uh, I, I don't think it's that mad of a price tag. He's young, yeah, he's talented, his ceiling is very high, he's Premier League proven. You can see he does it on an inter international stage when he plays for uh, for England. I think people are only laughing at the price tag because he plays for West Ham. If he was at a big club and they said, oh, he's going to move, and that was the price tag, no one would really... You know, even think about it, especially when you see man's go for 100 million, 80 million. Enzo Fernandez, how much was he? So I, I don't really, of course, the price tag is going to be there to be negotiated. And West Ham are basically saying, if you're going to come in, come in with a, you know, what we call a reasonable offer to begin with. I don't it's think he's going to go. Left, bro. Mm. He's I got think a year he's got left, bro. Exactly. Yeah, he's got a year left, but they can also trigger an extension. So and they could just trigger that at any any moment. So essentially, he's got two years left. The price the tag is a bit mad. Oh. Enzo Fernandez was a release clause. This is not a release clause. This is just West Ham saying that's the price for Decker Rice if you want him with a year left of his contract with a year to trigger as well. That obviously mm. has to be, you know, negotiated and whatnot. Obviously, it depends on if you want to keep a a player in there. I don't know yet on that one. But for me, I don't think it's worth 120 million. I don't. I, I do think though a lot of people kind of discredit him because of his price tag. He's a quality player, man. Decker Rice. Yeah, a lot of people's quality, opinion man. are based on because he's 120 million. They say he's overrated. Nah, man. He's not actually not overrated. He's actually a quality midfielder. And I yeah. think every club in here, especially in here, would have him in their midfield. I don't know if there's a club that wouldn't have him in that in their midfield. I don't know if anyone wants to. You know, would object. Uh, is that what uh, you know what it is? I, I think they're trying to price him out of a move, to be honest. I think they want to keep him. I think they're trying to put off a lot of teams. But I think it's a bit shady for Declan Rice, really, because I think 70, 75, 80 mil at a push is probably the right push. kind of price for him. You know what I mean? At a push with a year left on his contract, players obviously go for cheaper than what their, their value actually is or what the clubs want for him. Mm. I think, like you said, Saeed, they probably just slapped that 120 mil on there. So... And Patrick said can come in, people come in with serious offers and then they can negotiate it downwards. But for me, somebody said inside the chats there as well, Kai Sado is a better option for me. Personally, if they want 120 mil and Arsenal are going in for him because that's the team that he's been linked to the most, I'd potentially look at taking Casado over Declan Rice. I think he offers a little bit more. I think Declan Rice is a good, good player and I would have him in the team. I'd have both of them. But if I was going to go for one and the price is, is so high, 
I'd definitely be looking at Casado and trying to invest the rest of the money elsewhere in the squad. I think 120 mil is a bit is a bit scary, really. As soon as you start playing that kind of money for English players and breaking Premier League records and all of that, then every Tom, Dick and Harry is going to start going for them kind of prices. Somebody's got to put a bit of a lid on it. I think if West Ham got 70, 80 mil for him, I think they should be happy with that, reinvest it back into their squad. Because it's going to be surely a, a situation where Declan Rice is going to want to leave the club. Whether they trigger the um, one-year extension or not, are you going to want a player there that's going to be unhappy? You've been, he's been there pretty much all the time. He's given them everything, blood, sweat and tears. Sometimes you've got to make the way a little bit easy for him to go as well. I think it's a little bit shady what they're doing. But yeah, man, I think there's definitely other players that are out there that are potentially better than Declan Rice. But he is a quality player. He is good. Mm. You know what it is, though? I think for me, I think um, he's he's a different type of player to Caicedo. Caicedo's probably more holding role. Um, I think with, with Decker Rice, he, he could actually do both. He could do the box-to-box role um, very, very well. I think, obviously, the English tax is going to put that price a lot higher. West Ham know that, that people want midfielders as well. You know, every club now here wants a midfielder. They know how, you know, midfielders of, of that quality are rare to find, man. You know what I mean? Because he is very, I'm not saying he's a complete midfielder, but he can do pretty much most things. He's press resistant. He can he can actually pass box to box row. He gets goals. So he is actually, his game is diverse. You know what I mean? And, he's, and, he, and he is good. But again, like I said to you, the price tag makes his appeal less to the fans. That, that's he's a mod- model professional as well. you got to give him that. He's he a model is- professional. You got, I think, as well, like, not, I don't think the price is mad. I'm kind of with Patrick on this one because, what is it, 200 appearances for West Ham at the age of 23? Yeah, I believe that's, that's, one. One. Yeah. that's insane. And for me, it's, it reminds me of, like, kind of like a Trent Grealish sort of thing. Like, Grealish, I kind of think, like, you know how I think Aston Villa put that price up because they thought no one would be stupid enough to actually, like, actually, like you know, do it. And let's be honest, when, when Man City came along with the big bucks, what could they do? You know what I'm saying? I think that it's kind of the same situation with Greedish and uh, with uh, with Edge. And I feel like if with that 120 million price tag, they're probably thinking, who the hell is going to pay that? I know you got Lewis. I know you got Lewis down there thinking, yeah, man, 120 mil with Foley and then man, but he's probably thinking that's that's almost going to touch that. But I don't know. I, I just feel like if his name was Declan Declan uh, Rodriguez, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the the, the sure. narrative would be a bit different. He's he's English. He's young, 200 appearances, as you said, Premier, Premier League proven. And that's why you've got that extra 40 million. Internationally League. proven as well. Yeah, internationally. Like, I, I agree. I agree, when 8 I million. Watched, when, yeah. I watched, uh, when I watched the United-West Ham game, he was the best player on the pitch. I yeah, saw yeah. someone say Ericsson's better. They're two completely different players. You can't compare Ericsson. To he was Declan trolling. Rice. They, they give he you two completely he different things. But Declan Rice is a quality player. 120 is a lot. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here saying, yeah, 120 bargain. But he's around about that 80 to 100 million for me. His, uh, his price, funny. his age, yeah. his age, obviously what he's done in the Prem already, proven international player, very, like Fremzy saying, model professional, captain material already, and he's, his ceiling is high. So you're buying the potential as well. You've got at least another 10, 12 years out of him. I think with the with the market as well, obviously like what Saeed said, man are going man are always going to be overpriced, especially if they're English. I think if, if Trent was to have a year left on his contract and Liverpool were to put a price tag on him, how much are we looking at? Really? Yeah, mental if, mental numbers. If Saka, if, if Saka had a year left on his contract and Arsenal put a price on him, we're we're talking yeah, we're talking serious funds. And I think that's yeah, yeah. Foden. Foden, how much you how much are you putting on Foden? How much are you slapping on his head? Over a hundred is it's about yeah. Again, I do I do hear that, but you got to think this is a West Ham team that have been more or less just fighting to keep themselves up from relegation as well. At the same time, was so also fighting for Europe last year though. Yeah, they've yeah. been fighting for Europe this year as well. However, it's is one of them situations where, like for example, a Saka or a Trent, somebody that's already been at a top club and people can see what they like at a top club. There's been many mm. situations where players have gone to a big club with big reputations and they haven't kind of materialised it's, it's happened before, I think the moment you start willing to pay £120 million pound for homegrown talent there's always English tax, I get that you get me, yeah. however I think 70 80 mil, that's because of English tax anyway I think if a Declan Rice was in a different league yeah, like you said, if his name was James Rodriguez or whatever the fuck his name could be, I don't even think people <laughs> would be paying £80 million for him then either 
you know what I'm saying? You've got to look at maybe yeah. some of the players in Europe, top, top talent over the years that have gone. 120 million is, is a big, big, a big figure. You know what I mean? The moment a team accepts that and starts paying that, then it, it's not going to do good for I'll the tell you who'll pay that, though. I'll tell Chelsea. you who'll pay that. In Chelsea. Chelsea will pay that. They yeah, have no... What, 120 mil? Yeah. The owners yeah, got you'll no, pay no, no chance. chance. No chance. No, you will, though. Come on, man. You've overpaid. We have been linked with Declan Rice for about six windows and never made a bid. We will not pay that money. But but, but who you got right now, though? You got Todd Bowley. Yeah, but we've had him for like the last two windows. We still haven't put a bid in for him. Is how about this? Is Enzo is Enzo better than Rice? Well, I think he'd offer more. Yeah, I don't see Rice as more than a ball carrier. That's it. That's mad. I don't know, man. I think you're being. I right. think he's better than that, man. I think he's a, yeah. he's a very good box. He's a very good player, but he's not world class, in my opinion. No, he's no, not, he's not world class. class. But that's 100, 120 million, bro. They're world class kind of prices, bro. I'm telling you, I don't think he's going to go for that. But and you lot got also awesome. sorry, just one quick thing. I think people got also got to understand this is West Ham valuing him and saying this is what we value him at. And if you're gonna come in, come in with a decent bid. Of course, that's gonna get negotiated down. Yeah. But we also I know we're saying ask West Ham, it's not a big club, but he's their best player by country mile. If they lose him, they're fucked. So I understand that that's what they value him at as well. We've got to take that into consideration when we look at these smaller clubs. <laughs> he's trying to make a uh, make a case for Harry Kane going in. He's trying to Patrick trying to listen. Come Harry, Kane, Harry Kane, Harry Kane, Kane is a world what do you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> and even last Harry season, Kane's even last season, they wanted a hundred mil for him. You get me? For me, I'd rather pay one hundred and twenty mil for a, a Harry Kane last season than a Declan Rice one hundred and twenty mil because you know what he's going to yeah, give you. Isn't it? Even with his age, I still think Harry Kane's got a good four years left in him. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's been doing yeah. it at the top level. So Depends what you're after, though, isn't it? Depends what you're after. I, I rate Declan Rice very highly, and I think whoever gets him has got a fantastic player yeah. for a long time. They have, they have got a good player, but 120 mil, bro, that's... Yeah, that's, no, that, that price is crazy. Money, if he goes for that, I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. I think it would be about 80 to 90, personally. And yeah, big up to Kaz as well. Yeah, Kaz, yeah, stop, Kaz, stop cursing your team every time he jumps on DR Sports. They end I, up I told him, man, stop going there, man. He's not listening to me, man. Go again, right, fam. Go again. <laughs> again. We need all the hope we can get. <laughs> Bro, it's mad. But you know what it is, though? I think for me, like I said to you, the fact that West Ham can't afford to lose him because if they lose, if they lose Decker Rice, they've lost their captain, they've lost their leader, they've lost, they've almost lost a bit of West Ham a little bit in a sense, mm. like, you know, and I think they can't afford to do that. Like, if you look at West Ham, what's the first thing you think about West Ham? I think of Declan Rice in that midfield. How are you going to stop that battle? I think West Ham are going to try and make sure it's tough for them. If they do sell him, they sell him for 100 million, then they go buy, I don't know, someone that can somehow replace his qualities in there. And it's difficult in this market. Only Brighton at the minute are, are finding a way of selling players and buying good, good players, you know, to, to kind of, you know, when they do look at us, to be in. Still be come from Villarreal. Nobody knew about him. They got him and they, they Cucurella was out the door. So, you know what I mean? It's it's mad. Paquette is a different sort of player. He's more, you know what I mean? Um, he played well, but I still don't rate him. I'm not going to lie to you. I still don't rate him. Um, but yeah, listen, I just think for me, old, I don't know, Chelsea at the minute, are you linked with him heavily or is it just kind of more rumours? No, all this is is just fans with this weird little rice and mount fetish that want to see their two best friends together. We have been linked with him for so long with BSPR and never put in a bid. That's why, like, I'm not even I, I'm not even fussed about about him being 120 million. Raise the price tag up if you want. Like, we're still not going to drop a bid. I hope we don't because we've You've heard so much. Right right right. right. No, it's just it's just annoying. That's it because he's a good player, but. We've got people in this fan base who act like he's going to come in and be the second coming of Frank Lampard or SCN or something. No. Right now, all he is is just a ball carrier. Great box-to-box -box midfielder. Nowhere worth near over 80 million for me. Mm. Even that. Especially with a year left on his contract. I don't want him at Chelsea. Good player, but I don't want him at Chelsea. I think that's mm. so mad. The fact that you have Enzo Fernandez and, and how much he costs, I think that's mad to say. Enzo is better than him. Really? Enzo's Wait. better than him. I mean, I mean Enzo's that's probably the that's yeah. The what, what I've seen of Enzo, he looks pretty shit so far. Yeah, I think Enzo's been highly yeah, he's surrounded by shit. I mean, yeah. so what's that? What, what's that? 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 What's that?
that team might be better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Like, it's Enzo's it's like, like, West Ham are, like levels above us Listen, right now. The only reason why we even beat them in September is because VAR saved our ass. Yeah, yeah, not facts, but bro, again, because it's not Declan Rodriguez and Enzo Fernandez, that's the difference for me. Because it's the no, for me, the difference nah, is- I don't. I think it's just an easy thing for people to say, "Oh, you change his name and this, that, and the other." People say that, and then next man jump on it, and I, I don't think that's the case. Like I said, is even if his name was that bro and he was playing over in at Dortmund or he was playing wherever, he ain't going for 120 mil. I tell you that for a fact, he ain't no. going. Jude yeah, Bellingham, I'm... yeah. Say Jude Bellingham, you can understand him going for 120 mil. You get me? Compared to what a Declan Rice is there. Nah, kind of... nah, but what I'm saying think... is, I can I can understand Jude Bellingham going for 120 mil because what this guy offers you is just if you put him and Declan Rice, yeah. If you compare both of them two players, for me, obviously, I know Declan Rice gives you a bit more defensively, but they're both box to box players, and and Jude Bellingham is is miles ahead, man. Miles ahead of somebody like Declan Rice. They're both English. Mm. Can't be going for the same kind of price, I'm telling you now. I think Enzo's quality. I think he will shine next season around a six. He's not a six, you know what I mean? And he's obviously right now playing that role. If you get Lavia next to him or a Caicedo, Enzo will cook. So I don't think even Chelsea need to go for the for the for the Deca Rice option anymore. That was maybe two or three years ago. Now there's Lavia around. There's um there, there's obviously Caicedo around. There's other players that are around maybe in Europe, Ogate. If you go you for know, Jordan you know. Anderson, man, he might be leaving Liverpool. Oh, wow. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Enzo and Navio. Rice is better than him. him. I'll say that. I'll say that. Yeah. But Arsenal, Arsenal would, obviously, you, you might need to replace probably, I know Part is on the bench right now and his form not great, but you need a, a next understudy to him. You need, um, obviously, El Nelly doesn't have any worth anymore. Xhaka's probably going to leave. So you need, you might need to upgrade in that midfield as well. Would you take, would you take Rice? If if the manager uh, yeah, wanted him, I'll take Rice. I think Rice is an excellent player. I'll take him. The only thing is, what I'm saying is, I think the price tag of 120 mil is just too much for him. I think he's a quality player. He's got a lot of room for progression and development. You get me? I, I would like to have him in the team and a Kaiseido in the team. I'd like both of them in the team because a Declan Rice can step in and kind of fill Shaka's role, and a Kaiseido could come in and fill Thomas Partey's role. And I think that would suit us right down to the ground. But if you're gonna ask for me, ask me to pick one. I would probably take Casado over over Declan Rice, and that's just being totally honest because the price of Declan Rice that's been branding around, like I said, it might not be the full price, but 120 mil. I think we're not a club like Chelsea and City and Newcastle that could go out there and spend silly money year in year out. We have to be a little bit wiser with what we do, and I think we've got a very good base at the moment, and we've got really good trimmings. We just add three, four players to that team, and and we could take it to the next level. However, people, somebody says in the comments there, Premzi, why do you care about the money? It's not your money. It's time the board spend. I understand that, but financial fair play kicks into, into play as well. You get me? You have to look at that. It's not FIFA where you can do a financial takeover and spend 500 million, even if the guy wants to spend 500 million. It doesn't work like that in football. That's why we see in Manchester City at this moment in time under so many serious charges. You get me? And I'd rather my club be safe and secure and run smartly then then mm. come into any problem like that you get me we've seen rangers in the past come into liquidization and, and and shit like that so even though it's not my money and i don't care what they spend i hear that but sometimes you've got to look at it uh on a, a bit of a, a level where you think if you could spend smart and recruit well because a lot mm. of players that have walked into arsenal's doors they've they've come good 90 percent of the players that arsenal have brought have come good and a lot of us probably sitting here were probably questioning a lot of them signings at the time Tommy Asus and Ben Whites and Ramsdales and all of these kind of guys, but they've come good. So sometimes you've got to put a little bit of trust in, in the manager. Whoever, if he decides to spend 120 mil on him, happy days. But then I can guarantee you other areas are going to get affected because the money's just not going to be there to spend. So that, that's how I see yeah. it, man. I think, I think we've got to be yeah, wise. No. Teams like Brighton, Saeed, can go out there and buy Casado for what, three million or whatever, how much they paid for him. Bro. It's, it's mad. It hurts me, man. It hurts me because we were that close to signing Caicedo and obviously they didn't back Ragnick. You know, these guys that you see right now, uh, Alvarez United, what Enzo Fernandez United, what him? So right. let, let me ask you guys a question though. Let me ask, if, for example, Premzi, Saeed, Mons, if your club went out and bought Caicedo before they were Caicedo or McAllister before he was McAllister, would your fans accept it? That's the this honest is, question. This is yeah. my thing because I think with... With these guys, and we look at 
we look at their worth before you know they've been they've had their experience. Mm. You have to look at a loan straight away. I'll be real, especially Man United and Chelsea fans. I'm not sure so much Arsenal and Liverpool, but more so Chelsea and Chelsea and United. If you went and bought a Caicedo with no, he's no, he's got no real football ID, no talent ID. You know, maybe a few of the, the experts know him, but you'll probably look at him and think, is he gonna play? Does he deserve to play? Like you'd look at him and go, maybe he needs to ease himself in. So if he goes to a Brighton as opposed to going to a Man United. He's gonna. He's not gonna get the same development. He's not gonna yeah, develop the same way. I agree with that. He's not gonna. Exactly. Like, he's gonna come in every few games, every few cup games, and he's gonna have to show his worth that way. So, for instance, Fabio Vieira, we all laugh at him, call him crap, or you know, some Arsenal fans say he's not good enough. I call him the Portuguese eyelash. But I guarantee, you, if he went to a Brighton or if he went to a, a Brentford and he's playing game in, game out, like I'm not saying he'll hit the ground running, but he, he'll have a whole season under his belt, and he's looking. He's gonna. He's gonna look like a more complete player. Same with McAllister. Yeah. Same, same with um, Caicedo. So I think, actually, that's the perfect point. I was going to bring that up. Just you know that. what? If, if these guys have genuine talent and they genuinely got that quality in them, regardless of if they come to an Arsenal, United or a Brighton, it would definitely show through. Look at Martinelli. We brought Martinelli to go into the reserves. This guy came, done a pre-season, straight into the first team. So it, it can happen. If you've got that quality there and the manager can see that quality in you, then... It, it can happen, but at the same time, I think Monts is, is definitely correct in the aspect of getting game time and, and developing and, and yeah. showing everybody in the Premier League that, yo, I'm this guy now. So I hear that. And look, even with um, a few of the guys in the comments, I mentioned a few of the players there. Sambi Lukonga is no longer at Arsenal. He's on loan. He's out of the club. Tavares is out, out on loan, out, out the club. They're probably going to get sold when they come back. You get me? So the business that Arsenal have been making is very smart. Regardless what you say about Zinchenko, he gives us a lot going forward. Yeah, defensively, I personally believe Kieran Tierney's a much better left-back defensively than him. But still, you can't deny that him and Jesus coming into this team has took us to a new level. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. I think so. Really, I think, you know, someone like Lokonga, I think that's not, it's not similar to a Kaiseido, but it's a similar profile where you put someone in for cheap and he's probably not going to play as much. And if you look at him, the way he's handled things, I, I don't think Lokonga is a bad player, but I think Arsenal was just a level above for him. And again, if he if he started if he started at a Premier League club, week in, week out, I'm not going to say he'd be Caicedo. You wouldn't be Caicedo, but you'd see a different type of Lokonga, a more confident type of Lokonga. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's we're being a bit that, too soft. But lot, he's he's gone to Crystal don't. Palace, and Crystal Palace is a, a, a big level below Arsenal. He's not done anything fantastic. There, not done really. anything there. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, you know I think I mean? we signed him on on a tip off from Vincent Company. I think that's the reason we signed him. To be fair, and I, I just don't think that was smart at the time. <laughs> yeah, also Patrick Patrick Vieira. I think he's gonna say the next coming of that Patrick Vieira. I don't know how he was even like, mentioned as Patrick Vieira. Like, bro, the guy hardly plays a like Patrick Vieira. Like, what was this idea that he's the next Patrick Vieira? But listen, we don't want to move on. Um, on, on Decker Rice all day. We've got to talk about United because obviously, mm. you know what I mean? The top mm. Yeah. Yeah, easy. It ain't easy right now. But <laughs> listen, I'm not gonna lie, I'm 50 50 and I got cooked yesterday because all the people were saying, yo, you must. What do you mean you're 50 50? This and that. You were top points clear of, of, of what you call it, um, of Liverpool. Liverpool. But it ain't easy, man. And it's catching up to us now. We need to get three wins at last four. Liverpool, I know, and I know. And Mons is going to say, oh, no, that's a difficult game. You will win the next three out of your last three. I don't know. You will. Yeah. You, bro, Mons, allow this talk. You're going to win the next three out of your last three. So stop okay. it here. Yeah? I'm going to say what you said to me, you know, when, and what Kaz said to me. When you guys so you're trying your, to throw out the bad yeah. look and that yeah, and get yeah, me yeah. jinxing when, when a man and man, that. <laughs> correct. When you man were in your little pomp and you beat Barcelona and you were third and you were like one win away from a title race, one game at a time. I'm going to tell you one thing. game at a time, man. One well, you've won the last time. six. You've won your last six. Exactly. Exactly. When's that happened all season? But this is what I'm saying. This is your business end of your season. Mentality monsters, isn't it? This is what you do. Yeah, but our team is not. We don't even have our full team. Same to you. We we don't have you know, like our midfield. Our starting midfield is like Henderson, Fabinho, and Curtis Jones. Granted, he's playing very well, but this isn't like Liverpool. I, this, you, uh, you nearly got me there. Wait, <laughs> you nearly got me there. You know. Let's talk about United. Let's talk about Casemiro. 
It's all about Casemiro because he's been Casemiro. Awesome it's it's, it's okay. You have a dip of form. You see, no, no, part no, no, no. at the minute. He's having a dip of form, and he's going to be challenged. Wait, 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 we recruited in uh, January. We took Jorginho, Lewis's boy. Let's give him a run out. Now you rate him. Now you rate Jorginho. I'm rating it. I'm rating it. You didn't want to I told you, bro. I told you, bro. Now you're larging up Jorginho. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't exactly. Yeah, well, look, he's coming. I'm not a man of doing it. He said his name. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all right to put my hands up and say, look, I'm wrong at certain times. At the end of the day, with Jorginho, I think if you would tell me still going for Casado or going for Jorginho, I would still go for Casado regardless. And that was my point in the in the beginning. You get me? Obviously, we got Jorginho. Uh, I didn't really rate him too tough, I'm not going to lie. Even now, I don't think he's the best player. He could just come in and do a job. I think compliments Granite Xhaka and Odegaard. I think they're kind of pattern of play compliments each other. But if you look at Jorginho compared to Thomas Partey on an all-round basis, Thomas Partey is a much better player. It's just at this moment in time, Jorginho yeah. stepped in. He's taking his opportunity, you get me, and he's he's doing all right still. No, but that's a different that's story. That's great. Now, now long give may it continue. Long may guys, it continue. Guys, we're distracted from that's the great main frenzy, but can point. I have him back now, please? No, no. <laughs> You've got your 40 back. points. Stay away. He is winning. Don't let him. I'm get not winning. Yeah, yeah, speak. This is my yeah. 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 I ain't doing for the pressure. You won't speak about yeah. your top four hopes. You're yeah, saying one game at a time. Are you getting top four? Yes or no? No, we'll talk, no, 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 no. See, see, you just said let's move on to Man United. So when it's time to talk about Liverpool, we will talk. I'll, I'll give all my insight and what I think. Right, go on, go on. I actually do think you finished top four, and I think we do as well. I think Newcastle will drop out personally. I think Man United mm. and Liverpool um, finish top four. I think Newcastle they, they get a bit shaky. I think they don't lose, but I think they draw two games. But apart from that, Said again, Ten Hag, that spicy Oli, Malassia, that spicy time you Tyreek Mitchell. I, I want to know Purple Patchford. I want to know. <laughs> Purple patch. Allow it. Man, 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 shouting out there. Lucky in that. that is unreal. Oh my you know, god. You know. <laughs> Let me. I want to know. You know what I'm saying? I want to know. I want to know is that we've got four games to put it right, and mm. let's see what they do. You know what I mean? Am I confident? No, I'm not because these these players are bottle jobs. These players are, are, are cowards. But they must. That's that's the key. That's the message to them. They must. Or else it's going to be war, mate. If we're in the Europa League next season and I hear, whoa, whoa, bro, I ain't about that life anymore. I ain't, I ain't about that life, bro. I want to hear. Let Saeed be oh, grateful, man. Bro. Some of us are hearing nothing. Bro, <laughs> Chelsea, you know, you might have played in car parks 10 years ago, man. That's that's a whole other story, yeah? And obviously Tottenham, you know what I mean? They don't win anything. So, end of the day, I'm Man United, innit? Like, that's just me. Why are you talking about Tottenham? Jess, are you fighting his shots? No, no, no. Fighting his shots for everyone. This is what United's done to him, you get me? I was still top of the bottom half of the table, man. you got to talk to us, guys. Bro, listen. All I need to know from you is that you must not be on some mad shit when we when you play us at Old Trafford. You must obey us and you must take the L and leave out the out the My friend, do you think we have? do you think we have a choice? Do you Lewis, think we have a choice I, in the matter? Lewis, you're you damn see, right. You play Newcastle. <laughs> <Newcastle, laughs> you play <laughs> Newcastle. Guys, in yeah. advance, I'm sorry. We, we're not capable. We are not Listen, capable. Nah, you're you're back to form this now, three, one. Yeah, yeah, this is the start now. You're, 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 Listen, you see Chelsea? Are you crazy? Did you watch the Forest United team yesterday? Oh, my God. We've got them next. Listen, Lewis, just do what you need to do. I don't want... You asked me once, can you do... Me a favor, and I done what I needed. But, to but do. you man are a capable football. We didn't even do the greater good at the Emirates, bro. The, the, like, last time, no, listen, you, you have no right to do the greater the good there. Man. Do the great I all I wanted was a nil nil. Like <laughs> it, I, I'm won't, not it won't happen, my guys. Please, you guys are all setting yourself listen, up for disappointment. Chelsea, I don't want to let you guys down like that. Lewis, Chelsea all in every title race. Chelsea somehow have a have a say. You know you want. You know you won me. That title when you won your game, remember you won me that title. Well, yeah, yeah. Really remember you took that title away from me in 13 14. Mm -hmm. You, you, you know what I'm saying? You took that title away from Spurs. 
That was Chelsea. We're full on Broadway FC, my friends. Chelsea will pull something out of the bag. I can see it happening. I can see it. I can see how it. Do you, how do you see it happening, my friend? Just, because you've done it to me and Patrick. You've yeah, done it to you've me done, and Patrick. You've done it before. When you've got nothing to play for. And yeah, we had Hazard. We now have Havertz. You is my that got super <laughs> frank, mate. He's going to do like something. It, is, it won't guys. hit the same, my friends. Like, we're holding six at Old Trafford. I'm sorry. Guys, man. guys, guys. Bro, 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 hold on, hold on a minute. Six. We barely score one goal, man. About six. six. Uh, I, I, how do you think I feel seeing three goals in a game? Bro, I'm, we don't I'm score a goal, bro. Okay, you'll score two. You'll score two. You'll did score you not three, see? Did bro. you not see Waggers hit that little kid in the uh, yeah, bro, that up in the crowd man. and that, man? I nah, I missed it, man. Oh, what happened? Kid. They were having doing a little warm up before the game. Yeah, he's took a shot, bro. He's sailed over the bar, yeah, and licked someone in the head. Oh my! <laughs> God. On a real one, though. On a real one, though. Premzy, are we are we bottling this? I on a real one, though. Do you think Liverpool are gonna do this? Like, be honest. Do you see the way my United play right now? The way it's looking, is it looking peak? You know what? I think, look, putting all joking aside, you've got to look at the momentums in Liverpool's favour in it. And I think, unfortunately for you, your two centre-backs are out, which has made you very unnervy. You get me? And the way United are playing at the moment, especially against West Ham, West Ham, I think, what, do they have two, three goals ruled out um, from VAR or whatever it might have been? They could have got more. It looked like men against boys, you get me? I think if United carry on that way, it's not looking good for them. But at the same time, Liverpool... <laughs> We don't know what Liverpool are going to turn up week in, week out, in it. So at the moment they're looking good. I, I, I want Liverpool to beat United to it. No matter of shit I've been hearing from these United fans, you get me, bro. I, I do not want United in the top four. If you man get kicked out of the top four, I'd be happy about that. But I think you well, def- that's the only goal for the season. If you lose the FA Cup final and don't get top four, you have definitely you got. got You've def- <laughs> definitely got another draw and another defeat, and you're definitely one or the other in it. It just depends if where, where, where do you see that? Right? That's a problem. Where do you see that? I think Chelsea might get a draw against you, you know. I swear, always draw against Chelsea. That game is always no no, 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 one, no. You know what? That's a good point, you know, but you know, I don't think we've beaten them. Oh, please, I wish. No, 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 no I'm gonna tell season. you a good fact. We haven't beaten you since 2019, Ollie. You know, when it was 4 0, the first yeah. season of Ollie. Since we then, haven't beaten you since Mourinho. Yeah, but then I mean, so you, you, you know, even in that 4 0 game, I think um Chelsea defo hit the woodwork like three times. Before yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Hit the woodwork, Edison, you have had a penalty. Edison. Alon- Marcus Alonso hit the woodwork. I remember, yeah. You should have had the a thing, penalty as well. The thing that's, that's in your favour, the thing that's in your favour is you, you you got three home games and one away game. You're away yeah. from that three. But that Bournemouth away game, that ain't going to be no easy game as well. Bournemouth could turn it on at times as well, man. So potentially Casemiro. maybe something to beat there. Can we, talk, can we talk about Casemiro's kneecaps? Because what I want to say, I don't think it's too early for me to say what I want to say in it. You know, you I, need to, I need to give it a little bit longer before I can really so run. Gonna, hold on, hold on a minute. So you think it's going to be washed like Fabinho? Hey, hey, hey. Let's not go all the way there. But Fabinho has somehow now become... He's now 49. He's now 49 years old. <laughs> yeah. But just me, then I'm looking at I'm looking at that Brazilian fog, Casemiro. I'm looking at that fog. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm looking at the way he was strolling around at, at the Olympic Stadium. He's been since he's come back from his ban, he's been awful. Not been the same. Not been the same. He's not, he's not been the same. If I see this continuing up until like you know, into the start of the season, we might need to have that conversation. Because my six, even though he's 49, has been pulling his weight for the last seven games. You know, oh, my six, like my finish, my so finish. Is so is it your me- no. you're comparing a seven game, you know, rebound and whatnot to, to a Casemiro who's been playing well until let's yeah. say no, no, no. start of March. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like, cool. we'll outside, outside. outside, I'm gonna ask your question. I'm gonna ask your question. Yeah. And look, hey, look, look at me. I'm gonna ask your question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so last season, when we was going for the quad and Fabinho was playing out of his skin for the whole season, did you expect his knees to go at the start of this season? But the thing is, it's, I don't think it's about knees. I don't think it's just a loss of form. That's all no, it is. No, no, Fabinho's done. He needs to go Serie A next. Done. You'll be you're comparing done versus a loss of form. No, 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 no. But the, the similarity is that I'm, what I'm trying to say is you, no one would have expected Fabinho after the season he had for Liverpool last year, the season he had, to then go and drop this unbelievable stinker of a season. And it's not like, and we've tried to like, 
you know, game after game, no, he'll come good. It's form, it's form, it's form. We're in game week 35 now. And hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Let me rebuttal that. Like hmm? Let me rebuttal that. But your, your, your um, players are relying upon so many things in your system. So many, mm. you know, you look at Van Dyke, you look at Trent, the way you play. It's totally different to the way Casemiro plays. Everyone can see Casemiro can hold his own. Whereas Fabinho, there's certain situations, and I'm not trying to discredit him, but a certain situation in the team that allows him to play better. Your more is system based. You you I know that more than anything. Look at the way Trent's I, playing I, right I know, now. I hear what you're saying. Well, I'm, 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 United. I'm just saying we didn't see it happen with we didn't see it coming with Fabinho. And left, I'm not saying it's going to happen with Casemiro. As I said, you got him for three, for four years, and an option to extend to five is at the age of 31. So and he will, yeah, and he will let them go. But if for me, don't let go. Don't, all I'm saying, it's more of a just don't let them legs go, or you will be hearing from me. Well, that's don't, hypothetical. Don't me. Go, you know what I mean? Don't don't jump off a cliff. Obviously, you don't know. You know what I mean? It's, that's a, it's a pre-warning. Say it's just a pre-warning. It's just a pre-warning. It's just a pre-warning. Make sure he starts that season well. Pre-warning. It's pre-warning. pre-warning against a world-class player. Fabinho, was he ever world class? Do you think? Of course he was. For good oh, yeah, season, that's he that's of course all. he was world class. Fabinho was world class, yeah. But the last two seasons, he was playing at a world class level, hundred percent. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. From from twenty eighteen to twenty twenty one, in fact, no, there was one season where he was injured, so he didn't really play too much. So from eighteen nineteen, the Champions League season, the Premier League winning season, and the quad season, he was world class for those three seasons. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he was. He was. He was doing numbers. He was Let doing. Me do the chat, guys. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. But for me, against a player who, for me, like I said to you, has done it for the past 10 years at a consistent level, is allowed to have bad form. You know what I mean? No, he's not. He's a five-time Champions League winner. No, he's not. Because when you look, we're playing well. He was, oh my God, five-time Champions League winner, best but in the he's, world. He's coming to a di- different league as well. Down. you got to remember, he's coming to a different league, yeah? Adapted so well, has been world-class all season. And now, obviously, with the red card, there's been a reaction. And obviously, he's not been the same. But that's just a loss of form. Nobody can deny his ability. Yes, you can say if the form dips in, then maybe some things are happening and you know what, it's not working. But I just don't believe that's going to happen. I think it's a, literally a dip of form. Like Thomas Deep Party. Experiment. No, don't, don't you keep Party. his name out of your mouth, yeah. Bro, what is your plan doing then? No, the, difference is, the difference is nobody was going around the field, you get me. Thomas Party's always been branded as a, a very good midfielder. It's true. There's, don't there's talk down any, your player. Uh, no, don't no, but it's true. Bro, you said he was the best team in the league. You got to stay. No, 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 no. I don't, you didn't hear them words come out of my mouth, so I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, but about I've, narrative, always, narrative. I've always put them in the same bracket. I, even when Casemiro's come to United, I've always said world class player. He has been a world class player. Yeah, yeah. Um, Casemiro, he's been there for what five, six years, winning the Champions League year in, year out. This is why, with the experience that he's got, a red card here and there should not really put him out of form. If he's got injured and he comes back from an injury, then fair enough, I can understand his form being off a little bit. But a red card shouldn't really put him out of form too tough with that amount of experience, especially at the business end of the season. He's already settled in the Premier League. He's playing well. I think he'll come back good. I'm not saying that I think he's dead and washed. I think he will come back good as a top, top player in there. But realistically, he should be offering United a little bit more over these last couple games that he's been playing. Definitely. He's, he's definitely been playing below par. Mm. I think, I think, like I said to you, man, it's one of them, isn't it? I think for me, United... It's one of them, Casemiro, the quality's been there. Been carrying the midfielder at one point, in it? You know what I mean? The back's, the back's hurting right now. But I still believe in him. I still believe when you put midfielders around him, that can help him and, 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 and just maybe alleviate some of the pressure, man, because he's doing a lot right now at the minute. So, but listen, I don't know, just to kind of go around quickly, United still making top four, Lewis? Um, probably, probably still. One more drop, yeah. though, maybe not. Yeah. Um, Patrick, I know you're out of the top four race now, so you could have a bit of <laughs> top, top finish of the United. What are you saying, man? Uh, you know what? I don't know because Liverpool are in scintillating form. Liverpool have got Leicester. If if Liverpool beat Leicester away, that's their toughest game because obviously Leicester are fighting for their lives. They then got Villa, who I think they beat, and they got Southampton already done. I don't know. You lot have got Wolves, Bournemouth. Chelsea, Fulham. So realistically, you're playing a lot of teams. I got nothing to play for, but you lot yeah. are playing well at the moment. It's hard to call. But just give me an answer, man. <sighs> Go with your heart. Go no. Go with your heart. No, I'm gonna say no. No. Okay. Months. 
Are you um, making top four? I think United. I think United finished top four. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Prems, Prems, you've said it as well, isn't it? Um, so, yeah. listen, we'll see. We'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, guys, it's over 800 in here. Make sure you're liking the video. Make sure you're following everyone's channels, man. It's not just about my channel. You get me? Like, these man make the show. So, make sure you're following uh, Kefri Lewis's channel. Um, you've got Patrick's channel. He's actually approaching 300 subscribers without even doing content, which is, I think is amazing. I mean, <laughs> you have to do with that guy, yeah? That um, you know, there's a guy online who's got 100k subscribers without actually posting content. So you might have to do, <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously, the guy online, bro, he's he's like 100k, and then he's gonna go to a million. You never know, man. So make sure you follow him, Premty TV as well. You get me, and obviously Big Six Bands as well. Make sure you follow it, everyone. But let's talk about the title race because it's hotting up right now. Definitely, um, it's hotting up, man. Listen, Everton, bro, that will give huge confidence, Premty, man. To, to themselves, beating them away from home, going into the Man City game. You've got a big win against Newcastle. How are you feeling right now? Is it is it more nervous or because sometimes you can be even more nervous than you was before? Like I don't know how you feeling right now. Nah, the nerves are gone now. The nerves are gone, bro, because I'm not expecting us to win the league in it. That's that's what it is. When we were sitting high, pretty, getting the victories, then yeah, I was happy. But sometimes you've got to look at the situation, I think. The William Saliba situation kind of hit us at the wrong time and we kind of had to find to, a way to deal with that. And now it's a little bit too little too late. I think in order for us to, to go and win the league, Man City got to drop points in two games and it's, it's really hard to see that happening. Everton, yeah, they've managed a, a good win. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they can do something against City. Obviously, I was speaking to Bish maybe a few weeks back as well and he was saying that that's the game that he's worried about is Everton away. Um, even if they drop points there, they're still going to have to lose or, dr or draw another game, which I can't see City doing that, man. We, we know what they're like. Mm. Get me, these men are just the different gravy at the moment. Haaland on absolute madness. It's difficult. All we can do is just stay there and thereabouts. You get me? Stay as close as we can to them. At the moment, it's a point. And then mm. hope and pray that they can drop points if it happens. Funny things have happened in football. But all in all, I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of my boys. Arsenal were in a in a upward trajectory at the moment. And as a fan, as I've been saying from the very start, even when I started this YouTube streaming and AFTV and all of this, I've just said I want my team to be in the conversation year in, year out. As a fan, you have that hope and belief to think this year could be our year. You know what I mean? There's no given right that you're going to win the Premier League. This Man City team, you can arguably say, is probably one of the best teams that the Premier League's seen. We're probably arguably the best manager the world's ever seen. So it, it's going to be hard. It's not an easy task. And in order for us to stay up there for majority of the season and to, to fight with the likes of Man City, we've cemented second place now. It, it's a good improvement on where we've been for the last 19 years, in my opinion. And uh, I'm, I'm happy in that aspect. Disappointed regarding us potentially not winning the league, considering how long we've been up there. But it is what it is, and it is football. It's football. I'm just hoping and praying. Every night I go to sleep, I'm doing a prayer that City drop points. Whether it'll happen or not, we're going to have to wait and see. Mm. I don't know, man. I generally think, you know what it is with me? I think a lot of people are just thinking that Man City is going to like win every single game. I think they're going to drop points, man. I don't know where it is, but I just see them dropping some points. I don't know what you, man, them are thinking, but... I think right Everton's away. going, man. Everton are fighting for their lives and we saw them turn it on against a very good Brighton team. No one expected them to win 5-1 and they comfortably put Brighton to the sword. I think Man City, Everton will give them a problem. Um, but if it's not that game, I don't see Man City dropping any points. If they don't drop points against Everton, they've got Chelsea, Brighton, Brentford. With all due respect, I think they'll beat all the rest of those guys. I think Everton will be the tough one for them. Even in between the Champions League games, the fact that they'll be concentrating on the Champions League, the game, is it, who do they play next week? Saturday? They've got Everton, then Madrid, then they face us, then Brighton and Brentford. Mm. Oh, okay. So they've Chelsea got they've got a be... squad to deal with two games. Though, yeah. yeah. And they've got the experience of dealing with two games. It, it will not be us. Just, just saying, it will not be us. I think it it'll be Everton, though. if anyone. Mm -hmm. If it is, I'll be, fuming, and I'll be raging in the away end, bro. If this is the game they turn up for, fuck that. <laughs> well, you're, you're <laughs> your L, L, take it like champs. Give them three early goals and just ask them to pass the ball around. 
Bro. <laughs> no, I'll be happy. Bro. I see a one 0 lead, I'll be fuming, man. That's not the game for it. Leave that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Great. That, man. All of that. So, so beforehand, it was forty points. I want forty points. Get us a forty points. As soon as they get to forty points, it's like, yeah, we're done now. We I don't know. Really I'm done. I'm finished. I'm done. <laughs> I don't care now. Everyone get your points off us. Like, we're done. I got what I wanted. We've left. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. But I think for me, all in all, I don't see uh, it happening, if I'm being honest with you. Um, you know what I mean? I, I hope I'm proven wrong. Like I said to you, I want Arsenal to win the league. But the way Man City are playing right now, it just seems, everything seems to be clicking. And it's the worst mm. possible feeling you, you can have as a United fan at the minute. Everything clicking for them, you know? So... Let's see. Oh, Arsenal can only just win their games. That's all they can do. Arsenal can only just win their games. And that's it. So, let's see. Let's see. Um, bit on Chelsea. Lewis, what are you saying, man? You, you're buzzing. 40 point yeah, mark. Man. Everything opened by the Achille quality performance. Yo, man. Chelsea are back. Yeah, it was beautiful. That The performance was still fucking atrocious. We didn't deserve to win. But I'll take it. I'll take it. Beggars cannot be choosers. I wanted my 40 points by any means necessary. Um, and we took it, kind of robbed Bournemouth a little bit, but they can hold that. If your finishing is worse than ours, then you don't deserve to win a game of football. And that's been the case both times that we played Bournemouth. And yeah, I got my 40 points at long last. We're staying up. We've guaranteed our survival, our status in the Premier League for another <laughs> season. I won't lie, when Jao Felix scored the third goal, a tear did drop from my eye. It's been a minute since I've seen three goals in a game of football. Multiple candidates for goal of the month at long last. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good to see a win. We beat the 007 Absolutely. memes again as well. Second yeah. time in a row. You will not catch us out. <laughs> you know what's mad though? Felix doing the, the thing you have to score. That was a bit shameless, that man. I was like, bro, you scored against Bournemouth, man. Relax yourself, bro. Nah, he's saying that he wants to stay. He's saying he loves the shirt and all of that. Keep him in it next season. <laughs> Shall I tell you, he played well though. Mad Awakening was quality. He's giving that shirt to charity as soon as he's back, mate. I'm telling you now for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Madawake was quality. Madawake was quality. I think for me, I like Madawake in the fact that, you know what, man? I, I, I watch Anthony a lot here and he's not direct as such. Like, he doesn't put him on his right hand side. When I see Madawake, I actually get a bit like happy because I'm like, I see a right winger who could go on his right, uh, right foot. Obviously, he's left footed, but you can actually go on his right foot. And you know what? He was dangerous. His end product's a bit still iffy. But mm. he looks a player. He might be the ones to watch out for next season if he's given an opportunity. Depends on what's going to go on next season, though. Yeah, he, he's looked like one of the few players that has still been switched on over the last few games. I agree with you. The end product does still need some work. But, yeah. like, for a player of his age, his experience, being in the Premier League for a couple months, that's fine. He'll get time to, like, develop that and hone his craft. But for now, looks like a very good dribbler. Like you said, very direct as well. I like how physical he is too. He's very strong on the ball and he's hard to take off at times. Yeah. All he needs is just to work on that end product and that's fine. But yeah, he was one of the few players that stood out to me yesterday. Him, yeah. Badi Ashil, Kepper Badi had a good Ashil. save in the second half. That was about it, to be honest. I, we didn't play well. It wasn't a good game of football from us. It was just um, Bournemouth didn't kill us when they had the opportunities to. There was times in the first half... They passed their way through us like a hot knife through butter. And when they equalised, it was like, yeah, here we go. Here we go. It was nice to be in the lead for a little bit. But they never made us pay. They never made us... They had chances. They missed a header off the off two yards in the second half. They cut through us a couple more times as well. But their finishing has always been the problem. Even when we played them last time, we beat them 2-0. We were only good for 30 minutes. They never got a goal. They just kept hitting everywhere except the back of the net. And that's the way it is with us. If you don't take your chances, we might get a jammy goal out of somewhere and win it. If you do take your chances, it'll be a long day for us anyway. But that's also why I'm not deluding myself about it. We're still probably not winning another game for the rest of the season. Forest Super Team looked crazy yesterday against Southampton, and they did the double over us. So we're probably going to lose that. City, United, Newcastle in a week after that. Long week, but see, I'll be up in Manchester for a night out, so I'm going to make the most of it. Yeah, my link up, my link up. Definitely. yeah, yeah, I'll shout you for sure. I'll be up there oh, for a couple of days. But we're losing those games anyway, and that's fine. I have my 40 points. I said as soon as we get to 40 points, I am done, and I'm finished. I'm signed out. Nothing Chelsea could do now could hurt me. Me and Saeed are going to come and link you, one with a four balloon and one with a zero balloon and give you a 40 balloon. Right, let's go, <laughs> man. A 40-point link up. Let's do it. I'm here. 
<laughs> that's jokes. That's jokes. You know what's mad here, man? Madueke left the Tottenham, man. I don't know how you, man, yeah? Your yeah. Tottenham Academy is a disgrace, man. You always letting players go, man. Yeah, yeah. he... Um, I saw someone say that we released him. We didn't release him. He left because there's no pathway from the Academy to the first team. And this is the problem. Why is that? Had... Why is that? Because... Of the, the part, basically, the route that Daniel Levy's taken, which is trying to win now, i.e. bringing a Conte and a Jose Mourinho, those guys haven't got time for youngsters. They want ready-made, proven players. They've not bedded in any youngsters. And unfortunately, the guys, and I don't blame them, like, you have to do what's best for you at the end of the day. So, Madueke, he knows he's not going to get any minutes. He went to PSV, obviously lit up, and now he's back at Chelsea. I say back because obviously he's a London kid. So that's a great move for him. Yeah. So until we get a manager who wants to link the youth and there's a pathway and someone who actually goes to watch the youngsters play, like Arteta did or does, like a Pochettino does, you know, you, Ten Hag does it as well. Managers are actually trying to integrate or integrate the youngsters into the first team and not just have them in training as training cones. And that's it. So that's the problem at the moment. We've got Mundell as well, the main Mundell, really good young player, another guy who's. I'm not sure what if he's going to sign. Scarlet, what happened to Scarlett? Where's he? Dane now? Scarlett's Scarlet. out on loan. He was at Portsmouth. He did okay. Uh, he's a striker. But he, six he kind of played. In. Say that again, sorry? I think he got six in 40. But, um, yeah, he got eight goals in 40. But he played on, on the wing in, in a lot of the games. And when they got a new manager in, the manager hardly played him. So he kind of suffered from that. But he's young. He's only like 17, 18. So, yeah, until, until we have somebody that is willing to actually bring these kids through that's that's always going to be the story unfortunately so it'll be interesting to see who the new manager is and what he has in terms of what his his integration plan is for the youngsters because we do have some talent there and even you saw us under 17s and under 18s both won trophies this year so at least i can i can celebrate that at least so that's a, that's a start and hopefully we see some of these young boys coming through but yeah that's answering your question, Saeed. It's the managers who have been in at the helm. They've not cared about the youngsters because they were only here for a short term. Mm. Nah, uh, Saeed, I've got to bounce, my guy. Yeah, 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 big up, man. Make sure yeah, you follow take care, Lewis, man. Take take care, Lewis, man. Big up, big up, man. Love, bro. Love, man. But yeah, I think all yeah. in all, I think, um, you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky one for Tottenham, man. I don't know what the future is. You've still not sorted your, your managed situation out. Um, Nagelsmann's in talks. You know what I mean? It's... I don't know what's going on, really, man. It's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? At Tottenham, like you know, you've got Ryan Mason in charge and whatnot, but it, like Chelsea, something's going on. Pochettino's having talks, but with Tottenham, it feels like there's nothing really going on at the club. If it's that makes nice. sense, it's, it's the same thing. We're having talks with Nagelsmann. That looks quite positive. There's also talks with other managers, but until the season's done, nothing's going to happen anyway. So it's not really. Um, but also as well, Nagelsmann's come out and said that he likes the the, the, the look of Tottenham. He sees that they're a big club with big potential, and he, but he needs to have a chance to obviously have put his imprint on the team. But no manager's going to sign unless they know who the DOF is. So that's the first thing. And then obviously, once you get a DOF in, will the manager have a say? Will he work closely with the DOF? Will they be allowed to mould the team in their image? So there's all these things that have got to be addressed. So right now, yeah, nothing's going to change in it. We've got three games left. Ryan Mason's done OK, to be fair with what he stepped into. There's always going to be a baptism of fire. First game, Liverpool. Second game, United. Uh, one one win, one loss. Uh, sorry, one win, one draw. And then, obviously, we won on the weekend against Palace. Fair play to him. But season's done now. Was Stellini was... there for Newcastle? Yeah, Stellini yeah. was there. That I was his first, that that was his last game in charge. He went to a back Yeah, he got four. sacked after that away at fucking one of the toughest away games grounds i say that but a new <laughs> arsenal put them to the sword man I, yeah, I rate arsenal for that, to be fair. we're we're not like the rest of them we're we're different we're different yeah, really this season i've done the double on them done the double on them home and away yeah, just yeah yeah, yeah. Arsenal yeah, yeah. done well i have to give them their flowers they done well and i uh, got a bit of luck as well because that penalty obviously got overturned it was the right call but sometimes they don't not, make the right calls that's not a lot no, that is luck because on other days, VAR doesn't do that. Do you know what I mean? We've seen loads of calls that should have gone. Yeah, but when the VAR's so, done it, because my man, yeah, he wasn't even, he was unsure. He was just fast to give that penalty because when you go and watch that replay back, yeah. If you're watching it, yeah, there's no way you're thinking that's a handball. You get me? You're not sure, you know what I mean? VAR mm. looked at him and said, listen, you dickhead, mm. you better go look at that screen, yeah, because you, you just, you'd be fast to blow your whistle there. That's what happened. Well, 
I, I agree, but it's the right call. But the they hit the post. Listen, Newcastle started very fast when they hit the yeah. post and started the post. And that I just think again, Odegaard stood up, man. What a player! Nah, we yeah. we we could have we could have scored four goals easy in that first half. Well, easy first half. You gave them yeah. a you gave them a hand in less hand in help, man. So yeah, mm. man. But listen. We're going to wrap it up here anyway, man. Big up to everybody saying we had about 800 at one point, man. So that's wicked on our show uh, at this minute. Uh, big up to the community, man. But like I said to you, man, follow up the people, man. Big six pants. He, you know what I mean? Mons is working hard every day alongside what he does as well, man. So big up to you, Mons, man. Let them know. Are you doing anything tonight? We got Phil up to? Um, yeah. Uh, City, City Madrid match reaction. It's a little bit different from what we do, but... You know why not? We we can't not cover Madrid versus City. Oh, come you know, on, players, so, absolutely. Um, we'll be there shortly after the game. Be live. So yeah, if you want to be there, tune in, subscribe, all of that good stuff, man. There you go, man. Make sure you follow up Patrick as well. There, Insta, YouTube, big up, bro. Love, man. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Always a pleasure, man. I love coming on with you guys. Always good. The energy's yeah. always there, regardless of the results. Months, you're doing your thing. I always try and tune in when I can. Frenzy, the same. Said, obviously, always love. And yeah, shout out to everyone on the panel. Patrick Tyrant, follow me on uh, Twitter and Insta, and you'll see what I'm up to. Yeah, big up, man. Big up. Premzy, big up love as always, man. You get me? I'm not going to lie. I'm not doing no reaction on Man City. You know what? I mean? <laughs> I'll tell you you're straight. <laughs> I ain't doing no reaction on them, man. But look, follow me on Instagram, Premzy underscore AFC, and Premzy TV as well. Appreciate a subscribe as I'm trying to grow the channel. Big up the chat. Funny, entertaining as always. Always reading the comments. And again, it's good to have the full panel on today as well after a, a little yeah. while as well, man. Entertaining. It was good. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Big up everybody. I'm going to be back in about an hour uh, for the Real Madrid watch along. So make sure you're there, man. Hala Madrid. We will be there. You know what I'm saying to you? Man City's downfall, mate. We will be there. Make sure you follow up everyone. Subscribe to everyone's channels. And we're out, people. Take care, everybody.